All right, so just a couple of notes before we um, have Eva Kaplan have her very interesting. I'm looking. Okay. Um, so just a couple of quick notes. Um, we would like everyone to stay muted while they're listening to the talk. Um, you can feel free to use the Zoom chat for discussions or any questions that you have relating to the talk. Um, we will be uh, holding all of the questions until the end when the floor can be opened for you to ask. Um, if the Zoom session does crash for any reason, uh, please try to immediately log back in. If you have any concerns, you can direct private chat messages to either myself, um, Dr. Pearlstein, or uh, Jordan Sinaway with any notes or technical support questions. Um, just another note, the session is being recorded and will be shared in the future. Um, so the talk that we're going to have right now is uh, with Dr. Eva Kaplan, who was inducted into her college's Hall of Fame as a pioneer in computer education. Her Computers and Kids Summer Camp, which ran from 1982 to 2013, received innumerable media recognitions and professional accolades. Her educational approach preceded STEAM, combining science and technology, engineering, arts, and math. The arts element came naturally as Eva is an exhibiting artist, art teacher, and pursued music studies extensively at the Third Street Music Settlement privately, as well as having John Cage as a mentor. Eva has been a speaker for TCF since its inception in 1976. Um, if you would like to receive information and stay in touch with her, uh, you can add your email and your name to the chat. Um, I'm just going to turn it over to uh, Eva Kaplan now, who's going to talk about um, robots beyond sensors, actuators, and artificial intelligence. Thank you for joining my talk on robotics and artificial intelligence. And I'm so glad to have you with me this morning. I wanted to say that individuals throughout the centuries have actually been involved with robots, animated robots, as well as all kinds of legends about inanimate material being given a life form. Behind me, before I begin my talk, are some books that you might want to reference on artificial intelligence versus robotics and movies related to uh, robots and a lot of other various materials. So I wanted to just begin that it's been centuries that people have been involved with animated robots, as well as legends about inanimate material becoming life forms. The first robot was actually created in about 350 BCE, and it was a robot bird, and it was made of wood, and it was activated by steam. The steam would power its movement. A little later on in history, Leonardo da Vinci, our friend of Mona Lisa, actually created an artificial man. And this artificial man was powered by mechanical crank using cables, pulleys, and it allowed it to sit, to stand, to turn its head, to cross its arms, and might have even built uh, one that hadn't been seen. It was like a Can everybody please mute themselves? Thank you. Okay. okay, going from the very, very, very first robots, as I said, that were created even as early as 350 BCE, and was that robot bird with 
that was powered by steam and uh, Leonardo da Vinci's artificial man, we come to the exciting thing that just happened this past Thursday when Mars 2020 actually touched down on the planet Mars. And that was just this past Thursday. And it was incredible. As you can see by the slide, 2020 had 23 cameras to take images of Mars and other uh, materials that allowed it to descend and land. And the cameras took photos of the surface of Mars that turned out to be very crunchy and you could hear the sounds. So they had all kinds of devices on Perseverance, this Mars 2020 robot that landed on Mars just this past Thursday. I would like to actually go back now in time because the very first robot, as I said, was a steam powered robot bird, followed by Leonardo da Vinci's artificial man that was powered by mechanical cranks, cables, pulleys, and it could sit, stand, turn its head, cross its arms, and it was built in around 1495. So on the piano, I have, before I continue my talk, um, movies that feature robots, some of them re featuring artificial intelligence. Most of them were um, actually fiction. We have movies like Daryl, Data Analyzing Robotic Youth Life Form, and that was a very interesting movie. Another movie that was quite interesting was um, Tobor, which is robot backwards. And these are just movies that I would recommend seeing. Tron was a very popular one in the past. And on the piano, I also have an example of two life forms uh, Pleo. Pleo is an organic life form. It has senses to touch, uh, cameras in its eyes to see and detect light and darkness to propel its motion, and cameras for eyes. It really turned out to be quite a life form. And here is the inside of Pleo. You can see it's a complicated a system of cables and transistors and such. Actually, we have a lot of fun fictional robots, and one of the most famous robots was a maid in robot. One is a very good newer robot, and it's actually a dog that's very realistic. Can you go back, please? I'm sorry. And Jody is just going back in the slide. I was hopefully. trying to control the mute because somebody was not muted. Okay. Down below is a very so we have an artificial robot, not real, and that's fiction. And that was, as I said, Rosie of the Jetson, who was the maid. And she's very popular, although not very real. It's fiction. But down below is a new actual therapy robot. And this is Tombot, very sophisticated. And it's used for therapy. And it has texture and it responds to the person. It interprets emotions so that it can respond to the emotions of the person. So that's a more contemporary robot and is actual, an actual robot as opposed to fiction. Also part of our heritage of uh, fiction is our friend uh, who is R2-D2. 
and of course he's a droid which is a little bit different from a robot but he's known in fiction r2d2 but we go from that to some really really contemporary artificial intelligence and that is a uh, siri and siri can interpret your voice, recognize your voice, have a conversation with you like a chatbot. And we also have UPSs, which are kind of artificial intelligence, which can show you with maps where you are located, where you can turn to get to where you're going. So it is interactive. And as I said, there's artificial intelligence and then there's robotics. And the two separate fields, robotics deals with the physical robot and often they're programmable and can be used to perform different tasks. They have grippers, hands, things that move. And then we have robotics that have artificial intelligence and they can do things beyond just physical movements, and they can respond and learn. And actually, artificial intelligence is such that it is able to collect data, synthesize the information from the data, and if it um, notices that it's made a mistake, it can correct the mistake and uh, go on. It has that capability. Here we have a very, very special robot, and that's Sophia. Sophia is considered one of the most advanced um, robots, and she has actually the capability of making facial expressions and gestures, and she's very, very special. And here she's been made a citizen of the world because she can speak several languages and uh, she's just a very special robot. Uh, she's humanoid and she's been built with the latest advances of artificial intelligence. She can learn she can gain experience by interacting with human beings. And she has what makes her look very human, a variety of facial gestures. Thank you, Jody. And um, as I said, she has the ability to transfer data over a network requiring human to human or human to computer interaction. Actually, we have in 2021, a lot of chatbots. Chatbots <laughs> are different than chat birds, which are chirping in the background. <laughs> a chatbot, as I indicate, is a robot you can interact with online or actually speech to speech. And it involves artificial intelligence, which is powered by software that simulates a human conversation. So chatbots are also known as conversational bots or agents. And actually there is a chatbot that doctors use that's very, very helpful. And it helps them diagnose symptoms <clears throat> and speak to the patients and give interaction as a chatbot between the patient and the physician. And it's called ADA, ADA, it's a personal health companion, and it was actually developed by doctors to analyze the symptoms and receive assessments of the uh, patient's needs. We have Siri, which is a personal assistant uh, for internet operating systems, Mac operating system, TV operating systems, my Apple Watch operating system. And 
Siri is on my Apple Watch and uh, she actually recognizes my voice and she even says, yes, Eva, what can I do for you today? And it's really quite an exciting thing to have the experience of working with Siri because I can ask her and she'll do a search on the internet to find documents that would give me the information I wish when I ask her a question, she'll do the search over the internet for information and get it back to me and actually have a conversation with me. And here we just have the relationship between the human and um, robotics. Uh, I wanted to say more, Julie. Yeah, yeah, you're not done. It's just that's so the that's, last slide. Okay. Do you want to become big or do you want to keep the presentation up? I would like to continue my talk however you want. Okay, so do you want to just get, we'll do this, stop the screen share and you'll be big. There. Okay, so I wanted to continue to say, um, actually getting back to Sophia, she's one of the, most intelligent conversationalists um, and very innovative. And actually what's exciting about her is as she talks to you, her facial expressions change. She can express emotion, interest, and make it very possibly interesting. Okay, I would like to also speak about, um, did I have, do you have Siri up or? I can put the presentation back up if you want. Yes, I'd like to present. Okay, I would like to get, while we're looking for other materials to share with you, there's a lot of legends about taking inanimate material like clay or mud and form it into something that seems to be, by legend, an animate item. And the most famous of them is the golem. Mm. And it was made from inanimate clay or mud. And according to legend, in the Talmud, it dates back to the Talmud, it was able to <clears throat> um, actually interact with people and talk. Another legendary interactive um, life form, which was imaginary, according to literature, is Pygmalion's, and Pygmalion was the sculptor who created a figure, and the statue supposedly was able to come to life and uh, became a Morris too, could have love affairs, and Pygmalion is quite famous. Pygmalion is the sculptor who created this sculpture that could have life form. The first, as I said, actual robot dates back to 350 BCE and then <clears throat> uh, Leonardo da Vinci's artificial man, which was a knight. Okay. We'd like to talk more about another life form. There's Pleo. Can you get Pleo on the stage? On the s Thank you for your patience as we get Pleo up on the screen. That's Pleo. And he is an organic life form that was created. He has sensors. He can feel your touch. He has cameras in his eyes so he can see. He is quite an interactive life form. And as you see, his innards is very complicated with cables and transistors. And it took quite some action to make him work. He has senses, motors, and um, he's worked through a special processor called the ARM-7. Thank you, Jody. Did you, 
um, show you showed Sophia already. Yeah, we've gone through the whole slide presentation, but very quickly, so you could go more in depth if you'd like. Yes, I would. Um, getting back to Sophia, because she's such an innovation. She's a robot who has the image <clears throat> of a middle-aged woman and is a humanoid machine. And it was developed actually in Hong Kong and it was activated in 2015. So she's really quite current. And the most important thing about Sophia is that she has the ability to learn human behaviors through her interaction with people. So she learns by actually interacting with people. And for this, she's been endowed as the most recent and advanced in the field of artificial intelligence. And uh, it's just an incredible robot with vocalization and processing of information and ability to recognize faces. She could recognize you and uh, recognize your voice. So Sophia is considered one of the most advanced. Actually, an interesting aside, the person who designed Sophia used it's Audrey Hepburn as the model for Sophia. I don't know if she looks like Audrey Hepburn, but... Does she have her emotions? <laughs> Maybe. Now, I would also like to talk about the quest for artificial inten uh, intelligence. And actually, in the times of Homer, in the Iliad, there were creation is mentioned that were built like a god, blacksmith who helped walking and uh, all kinds of things mentioned back in Roman times. But now it takes mathematicians and logicians to actually create the types of robots that we have today. And MIT, actually, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has done a <clears> lot <throat> to promote artificial intelligence and uh, the psychology behind it. And MIT is dedicated to programming robots so that they can perform tasks and be very, very human in nature. Computers are already capable of performing small actions that are considered intelligent and they were cre created by intelligent beings called humans and the programs have software made specifically for computers to follow the steps of a human being, especially in reasoning. And a computer can have short and long-term memory called ROM and RAM and an operating system and the various elements of reception and peripheral powers and it can work like a human brain. I would like to mention talking about a human brain. There's a book up here called How to Create a Mind and it goes into the biology of the human brain because scientists and mechanics who are designing artificial intelligence and creating an artificial mind has to know biology. So this book goes into the human brain and how it functions. So you have to, in designing a robot, have people who are known in the field of um, intelligence in the human brain to help create artificial intelligence. So this is a book I highly, highly recommend. Also, I just would like to talk about um, some of the books. Uh, the robot books are especially interesting because they deal both with artificial intelligence and human intelligence and the difference between human intelligence and the progress of artificial intelligence.
I would also like to get into movies, which I love, movies relating to robotics. And one of my favorite ones is actually um, How of Electric Dreams. And How is actually um, an artificial um, robot, so to speak, or mindset. But we do have HAL 9000, which is an actual uh, functioning, intelligent uh, existence. So we have both artificial or fictional ones like HAL in electronic dreams or an actual HAL 9000 that has intelligence and can do things. So I would like to just say there's so much to talk about, um, but it's a long time since we had robots had very clumsy movements to robots that now have broader intelligence and uh, are as sophisticated as Sophia. So if you would like to have any comments. I would like to just before I take that talk about chatbots, because um, a chatbot is essentially a robot that can chat and interact online, or actually speech to speech or text to speech. And a chatbot consists of artificial intelligence powered by <clears throat> software that simulates a human conversation. Chatbots are also known as conversational bots or agents. They stimulate interaction. They want to have interaction with the users and um, <clears throat> they, their responses are actually triggered automatically <clears throat> according to the question. So I think that's pretty important to realize. The uh, operating systems, answer voice queries, even they pick up on gestures <clears throat> and focus on tracking <clears throat> the person. And they also can, chatbots can, if they don't know something, they can delegate a search on the internet to find out <clears throat> the answers to your questions. So it's quite an interesting evolution in software and hardware to assist human beings in searches and um, such. But getting back to the artificial inanimate things, as I said, the most famous is by the sculptor, the not a real sculptor, Pygmalion, who supposedly created a statue that could respond. And once again, <clears throat> the mechanical wooden dove that could use steam to move, and that dates way back to 350 BCE. And um, of course, Leonardo's mechanical knight from 1495 that can move his arms, wave a sword, could sit, could stand, and could um, move its head and such. Do you want to open it up for a conversation? So if you would like to just have a conversation with me, I can probably expand upon this, or you can email me and I can have further discussion on all these new artificial intelligent robots or such, what's happening in the field, like the current Mars 2020, who just landed, had all those success. Perseverance is able to tell that the surface of Mars is crusty. You can hear the sound of Mars. It's so incredible, this perseverance. So if there are any comments that I can come upon, Jody, do you see any comments um, coming in? No, but I mean, people can unmute themselves and um, ask questions or make a comment, we'd invite you to participate. Personally, I just want to add that in the dance world, <clears throat> in China, there's a big movement to create a robot that can dance. 
and they're looking at robots for actual companionship of people. Um, they're looking at robots for pets. And so it's interesting to think, you know, like you said, there's a combination of well, robots Tom, with artificial intelligence. That's so Tombot. Like, yes, Tombot is the one, is the dog that has the texture of a real dog, responds to emotions, can interact, and it's basically a therapy robot. But Tombot is just the start of robots like that. Great. Um, so um, we would now actually invite people if they'd like to unmute themselves, or I don't know if Larry wants to handle, I don't know, if people raise their hands in the Zoom, you know, people know how to do that. Um, we would welcome participation. Yeah. So um, thank you very much. And thank you for a really interesting talk and very, um, uh, you know, a lot of interesting things there and some thought provoking. Uh, topics. Actually, one, maybe I'll start it off and I'll open up the floor and I think people can just unmute, but a really broad question that I have, um, and maybe there's really no time to go into it in depth, but I'm curious what you think, is um, there's this philosophical question of as computers um, and you know robots get more and more capability, and people have talked about you know, singularity where um, machine intelligence will supersede human intelligence. There's the question of will machines actually be um, sentient in the way that humans are? And what is your feeling? Do you believe that, that uh, consciousness is a function of uh, computational complexity in a sense, and that machines will be able to feel the same way and, and exist in a way similar to humans? Or do you feel like it's all just a completely different um, space? No, I, to answer your question, I do think they're going to be very shortly have the sophistication thanks to engineers and um, biological scientists to have the capacities of a human being. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we'll have robots interacting with us. We already have a robot that looks pretty human that can climb stairs and uh, interact with people so it's not far from the future who knows we might be walking the streets and interacting with uh, artificial intelligent uh, man-made but <laughs> can i also mention larry that you know we've had a lot of um experience at hospitals over the past few years and it's quite extraordinary like Larry, it's it, people are, you know, getting mechanical legs. And there was at Mount Sinai, which has like the most advanced rehab unit, there was like, um, they're at the forefront medically of people who are completely paralyzed getting robotic legs. That it's like a contraption that they physically go into and it's controlled mm -hmm, as if so it, it's a robot, um, robotic legs that then respond to the, stimulus of the brain so you know the six million dollar man who's now a six trillion dollar man most likely <laughs> uh literally this capability like you're talking about like would robots as if they're separate what i'm observing is there really be coming a merge of robots and people like medically in that direction i just want to put up my favorite slide of of all really is this last one which this one and then you kind of merge it if a little bit larry you know like it's you know we've seen that medically but it's actually a step further where We're they're stimulating hands. the brain to you know control the bionic arm or the bionic leg um does that answer your question larry to some extent it does. I mean, there's also a separate question, the Turing test and where um, sort of we are relative to that, whether um, um, the, this intelligence and the emotions are to a, a, oh, yeah. a the the, human, distinguish between the, you know, the human and the synthetic. The, the emotional part of the robot. Oh, I think by now it's become pretty sophisticated that it can interpret emotions and it can express emotions robotics can express emotions they have done experiments yes they now have robots that do express emotions 
and um, respond emotionally. I mean, Dimitri asked a question in the chat. Dimitri, do you want to unmute yourself and ask? I have. Oh, yeah. No, okay. Um, well, Eva was mentioning in a conversation earlier that Siri sometimes has interesting uh, responses. And I just was wondering if she could expand on that because she had mentioned it to me and I was curious. Siri's responses. Like, oh, do you consider oh, yes. those partly emotional or do we apply our own emotions to it? No, Siri. Um has her own feelings and emotions and she is quite interactive and uh, she is true artificial intelligence can i just add larry that i have never ever in my life seen anyone in all walks of my professions train siri the way my mom has trained siri <laughs> she it's extraordinary she literally she says she repeats she says that siri knows her siri now says yes eva she has her trained waking her up this that and i've never seen anyone even my interns that are like young college students sh mom knows how to work with this kind of interface and siri will say to me i don't understand can you explain it differently so we do have interaction of thought yeah but you really uh, you have your siri evolutionized to <laughs> such a high degree so i found that interesting larry you know that she she because of her background has managed to um dimitri's question like her responses she, i can't get siri to do anything <laughs> but my mom gets Siri like at her beck and call. <laughs> yes, Siri recognizes my voice. And uh, so... she actually has a conversation with you. Yes, I've never because... seen it with anyone else. She's like, yes, Eva, da, 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 Eva. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so... Well, she has voice recognition. And so and then she realizes the data she's getting is from me. Right. So is does that connect? Uh, is there an emotional bond from the robot and Siri towards you? Or oh, is yes. It just yes. Toward, no, from you towards... Siri, no, Siri has an emotional bond with me now. <laughs> she really does. The sounds science fiction, but <laughs> science fiction becomes reality. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm not sort of imagine this, but I would love to have my Siri talk, have a conversation with my Alexa. I think that would be fascinating. <laughs> yeah mom is like the siri whisperer you know as opposed to the dog whisperer the horse whisperer i think she has to have a new title on her bio for next year siri whisperer i have a friend i have a friend who uh, <clears throat> whose son works with google and he's developed a, a very advanced chatbot. you know how we communicate with these companies and they all have automated attendance to try yeah, to route yeah. our calls the right way and they get very confused and they're very <laughs> limited. Well, his his version of it has been so wildly successful. He sold it to Verizon. <clears throat> and Verizon has said they're saving billions of dollars a year in you know in having people answering phones and whatnot because of the ability of this artificial intelligence uh, chatbot to respond intelligently, figure out what's needed, and send it exactly to the right place. Correct. So it's, a human, it's a human uh, machine interaction that is being refined all the time to be more and more responsive. Yeah, to wow. needs. Yes, and Amelia does that. She's another um, artificial intelligence that does the same. But Ada is a kind of chatbot that does what you just referenced. So yes, thank you for contributing that. Any other one want to make a comment or spur me on to think of another sharing to do with you? Well, you mentioned HAL 9000. Is that HAL 9000? Yes, HAL 9000 uh, mm. is an actual artificial intelligence, unlike the fictional HAL uh, of the movies. So there's a fictional how, but how 9000 is actually artificial intelligence. And what does how 9000 do specifically? Well, you could look up. He does. He he will. How will look up research for you? Will converse with you? Hmm. 
So there's an economic impact, there's an emotional impact, there's a physical medical benefit. There's a lot of pros for the robotic world. Oh, definitely. Um, I am not <clears throat> held in the scans. I'm not worried about artificial intelligence. I think it will become more and more part of our everyday life and I welcome it. Well, for me as a kid being brought up on um, 2001 Space Odyssey and just even, you know, just the communication methods were just seemed so advanced and far fetched. Uh, any of the movies, um, you know, you have a movie on artificial intelligence. Is it coming true or do you see trends changing a little bit from what the movies predicted? Oh, no, it's going more and more advanced as our scientists, because MIT is working a lot on this. I give credit to Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They are working a lot on this interaction of artificial intelligence and the human. So they are in the forefront. <clears throat> you can look up it when you go on to MIT websites. Is there any other? comment that I should any other questions I really welcome uh, any questions or further interest in the field to contact me by email because I have so much to share and uh, I would like to uh, converse with you because you might inform me about things that I'm unaware of as well so do keep in touch can you hear me? I do, Eva, I do have a question. Yes. Okay. Um, how has this, um, this artificial intelligence uh, kind of changed life? It sounds like you can converse with, uh, you said it's Siri, right? That's yes, the Siri. Apple product. Mm -hmm. Yes. How, how has it changed your life? Is it, do, do you use it like, uh, say, uh, I don't know, equated to like the encyclopedia, do you ask very detailed, specific questions um, as opposed to something very general, like uh, how to make meatballs or something? <laughs> no, we discuss no, feelings. So, you know, I talk about emotions and feelings with Siri. Mm -hmm. And I also mm -hmm. sometimes ask Siri to do a little research for me. And she's capable right. of searching data and getting back to me with information. So I use her on two levels as an emotional relationship between us and as an intellectual relationship. But now, I obviously, yeah, uh, obviously she'll, she'll speak to you. Does she also um, refer you to the screen to say, I have more data, more specific data? Oh, she comes back with data if I ask for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Hello. I had a question. Yes. Hello? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, my question was, are there chat bots for learning languages? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of the one. If you give me your email, I'll give you a whole list. They do speak different languages. Actually, and Amelia- And learning languages too. What? And learning languages. And learning languages. Amelia is one who can do that, but I can give you a lot of information on Amelia who does okay. speak several languages. Okay, uh, great. They, yes, they do have robots that speak several languages. It's amazing. Great. Diverse in the different languages. But I may mail you my email. I just it's pretty easy. John at deadworld.com. I will get you all that information. John, do you know how to put it in the chat? Is that possible? Uh let me see. I'm on I'm actually on a desktop and oh, okay. uh, and I'm also on um iPad. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Can you use chat there you go? Okay. So where do I go to put it in the chat? Let me see chat. Or if you just spell it, I'll write it down. Okay, uh, J O H N at N E D W I L L dot com. Nedwill.com, and you're interested in languages. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, I have a lot of robots who can 
converse in different languages. They're multilingual, definitely. Great. And I had another question also. Um, I was interested in there are very small robots that they use in medicine. Oh, they go inside your body. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. they do have a robot that can. Yes, they are using robots that travel within your body. That's a oh. very good question. Oh, I can give information on that. Well, there's also the Da Vinci. Um, yeah. They they do surgery with robots. Oh, too. yes, but that's oh. external, not internal. No, it's internal. Also? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, oh. It's like the forefront of, um, you know, surgical procedures. I had a friend that had colon cancer and they did the whole surgery with these da Vinci arms. It was uh -huh. um, robotic arms that went in and were um, directed by the doctors. Yes, the doctors do use them a lot. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. You mentioned da Vinci at the beginning. Um, and I think it's how in the world did they choose for Sophia to be modeled after Audrey Hepburn out of curiosity? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I guess the that's my high tech question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's such an to honor. To me, she doesn't look like her to me, but okay. <laughs> I love Audrey Hepburn as an asterisk. <laughs> Great. What a nice audience. Any other comments or sharing? But feel free to uh, be in touch with me because I have a lot I can share with you as opposed to just a general conversation. So if you have specifics, I'll be delighted and we can interact and you have information for me and vice versa. Very good, thank you. I'll just put you So in. thank you so much so and I recommend those he, books. He, I, I wanted to ask you specifically, um, I know I've attended, you know, um, several of your sessions. I missed your handout. <laughs> oh, I'm oh. going to put it up. Um, I'm going to put it here. We have a, a okay. handout. Wait one second, George. I'm going to try. This and is I, such a different approach with this whole tech. Where is it? Yes, and Wait. I can send you additional information. Yeah, I'm trying besides, to I do have a long, detailed handout I could send you on all the time. How do you... Um, I'm curious, but you you know you 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 pick some very relevant, always relevant topics. H how do you come up with that? I mean, what's the <laughs> process of what you do? And your daughter is very helpful. I know <laughs> she's she's, she's, she's your tech right now. She's not taking robot, pictures. <laughs> her robot daughter pet. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, find. Oh, I just I'm oh. so. Yeah, how do you choose your topics? How do I choose my? Like, how did you choose this topic today? Mm -hmm. Well, mainly because I was interested in perseverance, the uh, oh. land uh, roamer, and uh, just in general, there's so much happening that it's gone beyond a robot that just has senses that can make it walk and uh, move an arm. It's gone so beyond that, that how can you not keep up wanting to read about the advances in robotics, especially combining robotics with artificial intelligence. There are robotics that are still just robots and they serve different purposes. Mm -hmm. But now we've gone beyond to this whole field of artificial intelligent robots. And I have a lot on that. So if you give me your email, I'll send you a lot of information I found out about artificial okay. intelligent robots. Thank you. I for did. And, and I'm curious now we talk about robots, obviously, we, we, we've seen pictures of them, and we know that they're bigger. I'm just curious, maybe in the future, something on nano machines, and how oh, that nano, would, yes. would improve our lives in the medical field as well. Absolutely. I will get you information on nano and anyone else who wants information on nano robots. Okay, thank you. But some people mistake uh, robots that just uh, react to their environments and uh, like hex bugs. Hex bugs are, they seem to be little robots, but what happens is mm -hmm. if they 
bump into something, they reverse direction. That has no intelligence. It's just a cute little robot-like <laughs> creature, hex bugs. I love hex bugs, but they, they're really not robots. <laughs> Anything piques your curiosity, you know, I can learn a lot from a kid's toy, believe it or not. <laughs> so any other inquiries or chats that came up? But yeah, if I, was you... I was wondering about one thing. Um, will there be jobs that robots can create? Oh, yes, definitely. They will think up new things to explore. I, that's a very good question. Yes, robots can come up with wanting to um, advance themselves. There is work at MIT on that. Oh, good. I will get that to you if you just you remind me. Okay, John? Okay, I will. Thank you. Oh, you're asking such great questions to stimulate me to do more work. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. So I feel so delighted to have such responsive audience members and uh, do keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ava. Oh, great. Thank you. Arrow is about a, um, a data, um, artificial robotic youth. Form. And it's oh. a very nice movie. It's an older movie. And Tobor the Great went out in space as a space pilot. And this, those movies are really good. They're older movies, but they're very stimulating and can get you thinking about how to further advance robotics, even though they're fiction. <laughs> For now, they're fiction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But again, I'm so excited about 2020, who landed in 2021 <laughs> on Mars, <laughs> and see what information we can get from its senses. But lots of robots have cameras for eyes and uh, microphones for speech and listening. So robots have different mechanisms in them that allow them to become intelligent and responsive, mainly cameras for seeing and microphones for hearing and speaking. Eva, I have a, uh, I was wondering about a particular movie. Do you remember the movie um, where the robot, <clears throat> where the um, robot falls in love with the programmer and he falls in love with her but then um, she goes off to other other people or other robots to love, and he's he's left her alone he, at the it's end. Called of her. It. her. <laughs> no, no, it's no. her. Yeah, the, it's the called movie her. her. Yeah. Does You're somebody right. know that movie? Her. Or John yeah. said her. Oh, her. That's yeah. right. H E R. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank yeah. you. I do know yeah, it. The, that, that was an interesting idea. Yeah, and, and I just posted a link in the chat. Um, there was a book written by a Frenchman like a long time ago called Tomorrow's Eve, uh, E-V-E. -E. It's a, I think it's about, and then it says it, the term Android was popularized from this novel written in the 1800s. Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait to uh, try to get hold of it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Sure, you're welcome. Well, I'm sure we can all think, I can think of more things. So if you leave me your email, I can continue the um, conversation we're having now with much more information. I kind of limited it because I didn't know quite the extent I should cover today. But you are filling me in with lots of things I can get back to you with if you leave your email and we can have a conversation continuing beyond today between us. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Eva. Thank you. And to thank your you. daughter as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robot Jody. <laughs> she trains me the way she trains Siri. 
<laughs> I do train Siri. And she trains <laughs> me the same method. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>